What up guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to take dreamy photos using this and these. So what I wanna be doing is taking your photos from looking like this to looking like this without editing. And it's a lot easier and cheaper than you think it would be. Cool, so I'm gonna teach you a couple cost-effective DIY ways of achieving this effect today. Um, and all you really need is this, which is a star filter. If you don't know what a star filter is, they're pretty cheap. I got a pack of three off of Amazon from just like a random brand, Zomai. Um, I live in the UK, so if you're in America, it might be a bit different for you. But I got that for about 15 pounds for three, so you could probably get them a bit cheaper if you're just buying one. So they look like a normal piece of glass, but essentially they've just got some lines etched into them. And it's at the points that the lines intersect that the star will be made. The star will refract off of them. So I can show you this a little bit. If I just take the this lens and I point it towards one of my ceiling lights, so you should be able to see the refraction. Um, what you're seeing isn't the refraction of this lens, but I've actually got two lenses stacked on the camera already. I've applied all the effects onto my camera already. I just wanted to kind of see if I could film with them. You know, this is a bit of an experiment, but what you're seeing is a four star filter and an eight star filter stacked on top of each other, on top of my lens. And that's what's refracting on this piece of glass. That's reflecting the light. And so a key thing with this effect is you want to have direct light or as much direct light as possible to kind of get these star bursts to appear. Um, and as you can see, I'm reflecting the light from my, from one of my ceiling lights. So essentially I'm reflecting the light directly into the camera and that's why it's, it's so powerful. And in the examples I'm gonna show you today, I've just used fairy lights and I've angled the image so that I'm also using my ceiling lights just to really get, to amplify those kind of like star effects. You know, the idea of using fairy lights in photography, I feel like is a bit kitsch and sounds a bit cheesy, but when you actually use it with these effects applied, they sort of read a lot less like fairy lights and more just um, a tool to achieve a great looking image. The second thing you need is a pair of tights. Um, I'm really not good with tights. I actually got my girlfriend to buy these for me. Um, but you wanna get a weak strength of tights. So as I understand it, tights come in different strengths and this is the weakest one she could find. And you can see if you pull them tight, even now you start to get this kind of diffusion of light through them. So you really, you can really start to see how the tights act as a makeshift diffuser filter essentially. So if you don't know what a diffuser filter is, um, they can cost, you know, any, any legit brands can cost between 100 and 200 pounds. So this is a pretty cost efficient way of achieving a similar look. So diffusion filters essentially diffuse light in a way that creates a softer look. It's sort of um, most compared to kind of like old cinema to kind of create a softer look on, you know, when you have close ups on, on women and people who have heavy makeup. A lot of digital cameras now automatically apply a lot of sharpness to the image. And so what this does is it, it kind of softens it up so that you don't get something that looks so harsh and is a little bit more appealing. Um, also known as soft focus. Because you're not blurring the focus, you're just diffusing the light. The next thing you want to do is go out and shoot, experiment. These effects work really well in daylight um, outside. I actually got my girlfriend Lauren to model for me and we shot everything here in the flat. And so it's, it's a versatile look. It will work well outside and inside. Yeah, and it's all really about experimentation and just trying to have a vision to achieve. So after our shoot, I ended up with this photo that I liked. Shot in RAW, so it's got loads of information. It's completely unedited. Um, but there are a couple things that I wanted to go in and just edit, just to take it from a nine to a 10 in terms of dreaminess. And so if we hop into Photoshop now, I'll show you how to do that. Cool, so we're in Photoshop. All I've done so far is made a duplicate of the original image. Um, you can see that I've already got everything applied, but it's all not visible. I'm gonna kind of run through it. I turned that into a smart object so that any changes we make aren't destructive. We can kind of always go back and change them. The first thing that I wanna apply is lens correction. Every camera that you take an image with will have some sort of lens distortion. And so in Photoshop, if you go up to the top, filter, lens correction, you can go in there and you can start to really play around with all the different types of effects. If I set my lens correction, you can see that 
I'm not necessarily trying to fix everything in my image and I'm trying to use the lens distortion in a way that complements the image. So if you look here, I went to custom, remove distortion, I added 35.5. This is the original image. And so if you pull it to the left, what you're doing is you're zooming in and that creates sort of a fisheye look, which looks kind of ridiculous. But what I wanted to do was kind of elongate Lauren's features and kind of highlight her face and stretch out some of her limbs um, to kind of play into this shot. And so I pulled that up, which is um, kind of contracting the center to about um, 35.5 is what I chose before. So to about here. The next thing is a lens will naturally have a bit of vignette or vignetting around it. You can kind of see how the edges are more dark than the center. And so you can play into that and darken it more if you wanted to kind of create focus on, on your center. But what I wanted to do is kind of even out the image. So I just brought it up a little bit, trying to get something that, something that looked more natural, but not pushing it too far. Um, you know, it's easy to kind of go in and out with these effects. But what you want to start to do is kind of just use them a little bit and layer them up and that really makes a difference. So I've also, I think, moved this down the midpoint, just darkening that midpoint a little bit to kind of uh, to help even out the edges in the middle. And then the last thing was just added a little bit of vertical perspective. You know, if I kind of push that, what you're getting is like a really large head and a smaller body. But I just wanted to kind of, um, because I took the angle because I took the photo at like a, a quite an extreme angle to get the ceiling light in, I just wanted to even that out a little bit and just push that back. Um, so it looked a bit more natural. And so this was the final outcome. It looked a lot more natural to me than the previous image. Yeah, and that's just the basics before I start doing any of my color adjustments. So if I show you those, I'll go through them individually. The first thing that I wanted to do was I added a curves layer and I did that to lighten the contrast even further. Uh, these sorts of dreamy images work really well with kind of a light contrast. And so the contrast had already been lightened with the diffuser, the diffuser, with the diffuser across the lens. And so really what I did with it here was I brought up some of the blacks in the image and also brought across those whites so that there's more white showing in the image. Yeah, and this is really just set a whole vibe of low contrast, dreamy image. I then added another, oh, and I also set that to luminosity so, so, it, only affects, so it only affects the lighting. And you can see here that I set most of my adjustment layers not to 100%. And that's just because as I add them, I will adjust them. Um, you know, it's often not the case that you want something full effect all the time. And the way that you kind of achieve these more subtle looks is one, playing with the blending mode and two, playing with the opacity. So the next thing is I add another curves layer and that's just to add a little bit more contrast into the image where I want it. I've set it to soft light at 50% opacity. And really all I've done is added a bit of a curve in the center, pull that up a little bit just to get a bit more of a contrast. Yeah, and so ultimately this effect is just to, to kind of achieve a bit more focus in the image, you know, focus more on um, Lauren and her pose rather than kind of fading out everything. The next thing was I felt like Lauren's skin tone was a bit too yellow. And so I added this selective color. Essentially, I just went in straight into the reds and you can see actually I pulled these across pretty harsh. I wouldn't necessarily do this with, you know, a lot of images or types of photography, but what I wanted to do was kind of exaggerate this a little bit, bring out those pinks and those reds and those blues, something that creates a more dreamy vibe. Yeah, and so what I did was I went in and just pulled some of the blues out of the reds, added some magenta, pulled back those yellows, and then I went into the yellows because if I, and then I added a bit more blue because if I took away that blue, this is what it, it, it basically looked like without any of the yellows adjusted. It was way too orange. I'm going in and I'm pulling back a lot of what I just adjusted, um, you know, and then still getting rid of some of those yellows just to, just to kind of, yeah, just to get a bit more of a natural effect. And so I still felt like the image was, was um, a bit too harsh in terms of its coloration. And so here what I've done is I've added um, vibrance and I've actually taken away some of the, and I've actually taken away some of the vibrancy of the image. And that is majority of the amendments. The rest of it is just adding texture to the image. So I imagine an image like this kind of replicating something that's old and a bit worn down or something that is trying to look like a real piece of film that's been kind of scanned and everything. So a big thing is that I wanted to add noise. Um, I did that. I 
by setting the setting the blending to a soft light and I've only used 20%, you can use more, but I found that what I wanted to do was add a couple uh, a couple extra layers of texture just to kind of grit grit up and grungeify my favorite thing, um, these images. And so I've added just this, this uh, film texture Photoshop overlay that I found online for free. Um, I've also used this quite subtly, so this is soft light and at 40%. And if I show you the difference across the whole image, essentially it just adds kind of here's some like scan lines and a little bit of um, physical texture to the surface of the image. And then a similar one here. These are so subtle is the thing. And subtlety is key. This, um, I changed the blending mode to lighter color. If I show you, this is only at 5%, if I show you 100%, essentially it's just adding some white textures rather than dark textures, um, because naturally you'd get kind of highlights and highlights and lowlights appearing on your image, you know, through the years, if you were scanning them and scanning in images and stuff like that. And you can see it just adds a little bit more texture in her dress. Yeah, and the final thing is, I wanted to fake a bit more of kind of like that, you know, maybe like a filter on top of it, like a colored filter on top of it. So all I did was I created a gradient in Photoshop. You can see I've masked it out so that it's following these angles that I want. I've changed the blending mode to vivid light. So I did that and as you can see at the bottom, Part, one of these smart filters I added was displaced to my image. I've displaced it using a displacement map that is essentially just a scan of an A4 piece of paper. And it's, it's very subtle, but what it does, you can kind of see it in the hair. What it does is it kind of adds that texture of paper to this image. And what I wanted to do was something that was subtle and that didn't look kind of too crazy. Or different but when, once you start applying all these other effects on top that's what really starts to sell it as a realistic original printed piece so I, finally i felt like this image was a bit dark and so just adding a final curves layer you know with really minor adjustment just to kind of sell everything and there you have it here's the final image you know it seems like a lot of effects but really you know some an image like this an image like this took me about 10 minutes to edit and once you have this basic edit you can kind of apply it to whatever images that you took that day from the image that we have straight out of the camera to the image that we can present to people. They're only these small changes, but as you layer them, they create a big change and it really sells this vibe. And so to me, this image really looks a lot more dreamy. So I'll show you a shot on the same day of kind of what a shot from my camera looked like before. Yeah, and then a shot that we chose after we added the physical effects and then a shot after the editing. And to me, that kind of last bit of editing really sells the dreamy vibe. Um, but again, you know, you don't need it. It's really just to sell it that last 10%. Let me know what you think. Do you think it looks better with those effects on or off? Do you like this sort of tutorial? If, if you do, let me know in the comments below. Yeah, feel free to just go back and use all the different techniques that I've used. Um, and hopefully it helps with your photography. And, and other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.